Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to expand on my last video on sprite render sorting order and talk about how to get shadows to work in a 2D game for Unity. So this method of doing shadows is basically where you have shadows baked into the scene as its own separate sprite. So this tree has a shadow, but this tree and the shadow down here are actually two separate objects. And the reason for that is that we want to be able to, let's say, have the tree show in the background, but the shadow to still fully affect this dog as it walks through. Um, basically, having the shadow and the tree on different sorting layers allows this to occur. Otherwise, you'd run into issues like uh, the shadow would not show if you were in front of it, like right here. So if we take a look at this game object, it's called shop event, but really it's just the tree. Um, you'll notice that there is a sprite renderer for the tree. Um, and then as a child game object, I have a secondary sprite renderer that's rendering the shadow. So note here that this sorting layer for the shadow sprite is on the shadows layer, and you can call them whatever you want. If you want to add your own layers, you just click on sorting layer and then add sorting layer. Uh, whatever is nearest to the bottom will always show on top. So this player game object uh, player game object, sorry, is on the objects layer. So the shadows will always show in front of it. And that's why if the dog walks through it, even if the dog's position is actually below the shadow, the shadow will still show on top of it. And it's partially transparent, of course. So it gives a nice shading effect on the dark. And you can also see that the tree itself is also on the objects layer. So that allows uh, sorting to happen for like the uh, dog to actually show behind the tree if it is at a higher Y position. If you have any questions about getting the order and layer value set, uh, just refer to my previous video. Okay, so this is what the actual image for the tree looks like, and I'm pulling these images off of Open Game Art. It's some real. There's a bunch of really cool trees, uh, originally by Casper Nielsen, but there were some recolors done by William Thompson. This is the information. Go look them up on Open Game Art if you want to check these trees out, because uh, they're really well done in my opinion. On this sprite, we have the shadow down here, and you can see that it's not being rendered inside of the game engine. It's actually baked into the sprite itself. And then we have the tree over here, but currently it's all in the same layer. It's the same image. So what we want to do is we want to separate it into two separate images. So basically, we need to take all of this shadow area and move that into a different layer. So to do that, I'll use the magic wand tool over here in Photoshop. The process would be very, very similar if you happen to be using GIMP or some other program at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to have to turn this tolerance down to get a better selection. We don't want to grab any of those tree pixels. Um, maybe I'll even lower as low as one or zero. Uh, OK, so what we actually have to turn off here is anti-aliasing. I forgot about that. And now you can see that all of the pixels, which are specifically uh, the shadow, have been selected, but everything else has been left alone. So we can just control Z. To grab that and while we're on this new layer we want everything to appear in the same spot so i can go up to the edit menu paste special and then paste in place so it's now in the same spot it was in the previous layer and for these extra pixels i can just kind of rough grab them with the lasso tool and then i'll cut them again and do another paste in place Okay, great. So now that's two separate layers, we want to merge them. So I'm going to right click and merge down. And now the shadow is all one layer. Great. Now you could make the case that since we're dealing with two separate images now, it actually makes some sense for the shadow layer to actually include some of that inner area because there would be shadows where the tree trunk is actually at. Um, up to you if you want to do this, but if you want to fill that in, relatively simple here. We can just eye drop to get the color of the shadow, set the opacity, which I believe for the shadow is 60%, and to go ahead and fill that all in, adjusting the shape a little bit as needed. So this is basically dependent on whether or not you want the shadow to hit the tree as well. So now, as you can see, by putting that shadow in, because the shadow will always look on, be on top, it'll look something like this, and the tree will actually have a shadow as well. Uh, now, now that the shadow has its own uh, section over here covering the tree, the tree itself can cast its own shadow on the tree trunk. Uh, if that's something you're looking for, then great. If not, then just don't worry about filling it in. Now we need to export these as two separate images into Unity. So in Photoshop, there's a function called 
uh, layers to files it's under export so file export and layers to files and by doing this we can create two separate files for these two different layers so I'm gonna export that to my unity game and I'll hit run here as you can see it takes both the files and exports them so back in unity we can see that these two files have been created so because these images both have two sprites on them, we need to change the sprite mode to multiple. And uh, let's stop the game for right now. Um, and also we need to change the pixels per unit to be consistent uh, with the game and the sprite size. So I'm changing that to multiple and 32 and multiple and 32 for the uh, shadow as well. So now we can just open those up in the sprite editor and we can slice them. I'll just do an automatic slice for right now. So that basically cuts around the edges of the sprite and figures out what should be inside of it for both of them. And I'll hit apply. Uh, now one other thing I wanna do here is to actually change the pivot point. And I think this is one of the things I was trying to find a better solution on, but for right now, uh, changing the pivot point will basically determine uh, for the rendering order, where should it be calculating the order from? So if you have that kind of calculation in your game where you're taking the position of it, uh, this will be basically where the position is in terms of the sprite. So at about 0 0.15 there, and then 0 0.12 for this one. But of course, uh, that's not directly related to this tutorial, so uh, you don't necessarily have to do that. Okay, so I'll hit apply here, and we can go back to the shadows. So in the shadow sprite editor, I'll just automatic slice them. Um, and yeah, you know, it might make sense to cut away all of this uh, extra white space in the final export. I think you can have that crop when you're exporting from Photoshop as well. Um, but for right now, we'll just leave it like that and worry about it later. So I'll apply that. And now we need to bring those items into the scene. So I'll just copy that prefab I had and we'll change the sprites on it. So we'll do the screen tree over here. Oh, and the reason it's blurry, by the way, is because we have filter modes turned on for the sprites. So for both of these layers, we want to turn it to point filtering and no compression, hit apply, and that'll make your sprites look a lot smoother. So obviously because this is a different sprite image, the collider isn't gonna be perfectly right, but we don't need to worry about that for right now. Um, let's just focus on getting the shadows in there. So changing it to the second shadow, uh, you can see that the position isn't quite right. So we want to align that. So I'll just do this like the most simple way possible, which is going to just be to layer them on top of each other. Now, I think this shadow is supposed to be a bit darker, but you know, for the sake of just having the ordering go here, we can just stick with this for now and uh, worry about that later. So the important thing for this video is that the character can walk behind the tree, but will be affected by the shadow in all cases. And you can see that because we have the sorting layers set to shadows for the shadow object, which is a child of the main tree, um, and the tree itself has a sorting layer of objects, objects which is consistent with the, uh, the player dark, um, we'll be able to get the effect we're looking for. So let's go ahead and hit play and test this out. So the character walks behind the tree, but as soon as you go in front of the shadow, uh, it's going to start showing on your character. And that applies whether you're behind the tree, whether you're in front of it, and also if the player is well below the shadow, but just barely touching it in terms of the sprites, if the uh, shadow was in a higher layer rather than a lower layer, or in the objects layer, then it clearly would not be affecting the dog, it would hide behind the dog. So you could actually make the case that the shadow could also be on the objects layer as well, because if you think about it, if the camera is coming from out here and kind of looking at the tree, but the, the player itself is between the tree, the tree shadow and the camera, then you might actually not want that shadow to show in front of the dog when it is this close. Um, simply because the shadow might be cast on the opposite side of the dark, but not on this side that's actually facing the camera. So if you want that, you can just change the sorting layer over to objects. And uh, what you can have is by setting a pivot position on the sprite, um, 
uh, the, the sprite of the shadow, you can kind of determine at what point will the shadow start affecting the dark or where will it not. So kind of up to you on exactly how you want to implement that. But uh, the general idea here to take away from this video is that your shadow and the tree or whatever objects you're working with should be separate images. You should bake the shadow as a separate sprite rather than having it render in real time rather than it might in many 3D games. And you'll just have to keep in mind your sorting layers and the order in layer as you figure out which objects should be showing in front of the camera and should the shadows actually show on the dark or not. Uh, once again, if you want to take a quick look at that script I had in the other video, the main thing is that you just take all the sprite renderers and you give them a sorting order through a simple calculation. And the reason we times it by a negative number here is so that negative numbers, which are closer to the bottom of the screen, will actually render at in front of objects that are closer to the top of the screen, in other words, more in the background. Um, so yeah, just take a quick look at that code if you want to implement that. And y you might do this as a mono behavior, attaching it to every game object, but I have it as a singleton using yeah, singleton, uh, which is a package you can get on the Unity Asset Store. But the general idea is just take all the renderers and give them a sorting order through your calculation, and you should be good to go there. So that's going to be it for this video on uh, how to get shadows to work when you have a game object that needs them, um, having them as separate objects and getting their sorting orders to work properly. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys in my future Unity content.